Long live the king. What do you get when you cross Scar, a hippo, and Trunks' his hair? You get the selfish drum king himself, Wapple. Is he the most interesting or complex character in the world? No, not even close. But as a villain, he does have a good resume. When he became the ruler of Drum Kingdom, the only thing he was interested in was himself and how he got to rule over everyone. He has no compassion for others or even his own citizens, as shown when he abandoned the kingdom when Blackbeard attacked. And until Luffy shows up, the kingdom is in misery. There aren't any doctors to care for anyone, and Wapple had a hand in dealing with anyone that posed a threat or even had a ray of hope in the kingdom. In terms of unlikable characters, he's as unlikable as it gets. Though what separates him from those before is his personality, surprisingly cunning intellect, and his power, which also incorporates in his design. Wapple's Devil Fruit ability allows him to eat anything and essentially use it as a weapon. It's one of the most unique fruits in the series for me. Just the level of transformations and attacks he has makes him interesting and leads to a cool fight with Luffy. However, he still has flaws. Like the villains before him, he's not really remembered a lot. Hell, his ultimate act of evil, in which he kills Hiri Luke, is overshadowed by the Doctor himself, mainly because of his death speech. And aside from handling his kingdom terribly, his other personal crime was slapping Vivi. Ooh, the horror! And even though he has a personality, it's not that much better than the other villains. Wapple is an alright villain at most for me. He does villainous acts of evil, but isn't remembered much, and his overall character isn't excelling in other areas. I still had fun seeing him, but Wapple's chances of getting higher on this list were left in the cold and then shot by a firing squad. Hi, it's Trevor Tiger Shadow Clone here, so it's no secret that Spandom is my least favorite character in the series. Oh no 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 no! Least favorite is an understatement. The worst crime this piece of purple trash commits is that if he never existed, the story would be fine without him. CP9 were perfect villains without him, and he should have died when Robin almost snapped him in two. But the fact that he's alive and well and is a member of CP0. That might be true, but since Spandom did exist, we have to acknowledge his acts as a villain, which is why he's here at number 19. So Spandom in a nutshell is a lot like Wapple, a spoiled brat that uses the power he earned only for himself. He abuses it however he sees fit, and thanks to that, it makes life a living hell for others around him. And speaking of abuse, poor Robin. She spent the Anise lobby arc as Spandom's personal bitch. Honestly, aside from Nami on an emotional level, we'd never see something this abusive in the series, making Spandom's torture of Robin stand out. And he's not even that strong. He has a cool sword, but his real power is his power as an official. In a fight, he's not the best. So you might be thinking, why is he above Wapple? Because it's his character. His interactions with CP9 are fun to watch, and throughout the arc, it's like Spandom is just along for the ride. But his selfish actions make everything worse. I don't know, there's just something classic seeing this whiny lackey have so much power, and yet fails to use it properly, thus making one challenge after another for our heroes. Now when it comes to a flaw in his character, it's that Spandom was made to be hated. That's it. Although he does have fun interactions, Oda wrote Spandom with the intention to make this man hated as much as possible. And while that was a success, it doesn't let Spandom flesh out as a character more. He has one job, make the audience hate him. But he doesn't have anything else to offer. If he did, he'd be higher on the list. Not much else to say, but damn that Spandom. So are you done? I hate him! I hate him! Hate him! 
When you notice an insect on the ground, do you stop to consider it a fool? <laughs> the life of an insect is so beneath you that it would be a waste of your time to even consider judging it. That would be an accurate summation on my feelings towards you humans. Now this is ironic, the first real group of enemies to show on the list, and yet they might be the most powerful group. Hell, they just might be the most powerful people overall. The Garose are the rulers of the world, the Five Elder Stars. Anything they say goes, and every time they appear, you know things are getting serious. What makes them stand out are their designs, which are based on real people, power over even the mightiest marines, and honestly, their calmness. They don't act like mad tyrants or selfish rulers, they rule a government with precision and care. They like the way the world is shaped and they'll do anything to keep it that way. That's what makes the Garose intimidating. At their beck and call, they have the power to wipe out entire civilizations with a single order. And it's not like anyone can get a clear shot at them either. They're safe to discuss and do anything they desire and the world is practically a game bore to them. Now what holds the Garose back is the fact that they have almost no involvement with the Straw Hats and never personally deal with other troubles in the world. Their biggest mistake may have been leaving Blackbeard alone in the New World, but all they do is stay in one spot and never leave. And while that adds to the mystery, it doesn't help their chances of doing better on this list. I hope we see more of them actually doing things, but for now, it's best not to underestimate them. Sorry, I just had to play that, it never gets old. So the Celestial Dragons are like a fusion of the Garose and Spandom. They practically have the power of ruling the world, but my god are they spoiled with it. Remember King Joffrey from Game of Thrones? Yeah, think of that, but now there's an entire race of him. And they aren't just a one-time arc villain, the Celestial Dragons are technically the oldest enemies we've seen. In ancient times, there was an ancient kingdom which was destroyed by the union of 20 other kingdoms. The descendants of these kingdoms are royal powers called Celestial Dragons. With this power, they are free to do whatever they want and with no consequence. That's the difference between them and the government. The government always tries to save face, but the Celestial Dragons don't care, their name isn't at stake. And it doesn't hurt the fact that if one is attacked, an admiral is called to take care of the problem for them. So how do the Celestials rank above the Garose? Because of this family right here. Unlike the Garose, this family was actually involved with Luffy, and while they themselves aren't that intimidating, the power and protection behind them are, creating a unique threat that hasn't been seen in the series before. For its time. They may not be strong or the most terrifying enemies, but the impact they made with fans and the characters in the One Piece world is unforgettable, especially when you have moments like this. And with the World Conference and the ending of One Piece drawing near with every new chapter, we just might see more of this group whose likability is almost as much as this piece of crap. The only thing more dangerous than hunting bears is hunting... Bear balls. He was so close to not making the list. It's revealed at the end of Kuma's life that he was trying to help the Straw Hat, so that takes away a lot of points for him. However, if I ignore what he did as an antagonist, as a challenge, as a barrier for the Straw Hat, and how his actions shaped the One Piece world into what we know it is today, then I'd be a fool. Kuma used to be a revolutionary soldier and seemed to be one of its commanders under Dragon, but for whatever reason, the Kuma we knew was a warlord of the sea, and he was damn near unstoppable. After literally looking at the Straw Hats, he decimates them in an instant at Thriller Bark and comes back during the Sabaudi arc. It's here where we see his Devil Fruit in action, it can repel attacks and even pain! Somehow. It can also create shockwaves and teleport others away. It's one of the most ridiculous fruits in the series, which can add or take away cool points depending on your preference. I personally liked his devil fruit, but all these attacks are used by a man that never shows emotion, not even once. 
Kuma just does his work, and he does it well. He's one of the only characters that made the entire Straw Hat crew terrified, and can you blame him? The guy is f***ing huge! However, his most infamous act of terror is something he may not have intended for to happen. Kuma volunteered to be experimented on, allowing for the creation of the pacifista unit under the marines. And while his personal deed of separating the straw hats is infamous for being one of the most shocking moments in the story, it's what happens afterwards that leads the world to what it is today. We can argue that Kuma could have sent the straw hats to the same place, but because he didn't, he created a chain of events. Luffy having no crew, he had no backup at Marine Ford other than the Impel Down prisoners that most, though, sided with Buggy. Add that to the pacifistas entering the war, and not only did Kuma in a way lead to the death of Ace, but also to the death of Whitebeard, which in turn allowed Blackbeard to become the pirate he is today. That's why Kuma is on this list. His actions, however intended, always remained a challenge to the Straw Hats, but ultimately changed the world into what it is today. And while that world does have positives, its negatives have increased exponentially. Resty well, Kuma. You took care of the story like a real goddamn bear.